Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Music of the Week. My cat is here, which means I'm probably going to get like two views as opposed to the usual zero. Uh, I've got five albums to go through though, so I say we go through them as quickly as we can while my cat enjoys the heck out of these verses because he is the best. We begin with Holding Absence and their newest album, The No Blood Self Destruction. I covered their last album, The Greatest Mistake of My Life. I really fucking like that album, and I really fucking like this one as well. Give it uh, an A+, plus. I think it's goddamn awesome. Um, I Yeah, this is a band that I, when I first heard about them back in 2021, I just thought, oh, maybe they are just a fair bit of hype, but I give it a go anyway. And yeah, I'm glad that that's uh, carrying on. They've stepped up their musicianship a lot in this one. The instrumental work is really great. They still have that like classic sort of alternative rock post hardcore blend with a good uh, tinge of emo at times. But it's the presentation on the album and the scope of it that's really improved. Uh, the instrumentation is still great. I love the bass work. The guitar is really good too. Uh, lyrically, it is about self-improvement and there's so many positive and uplifting lyrics about it. So if you just want a good like therapeutic album, this is good for that kind of thing. Uh, especially the final song, The Angel in the Marvel. What a tune. What a closer. Really, really good stuff. The performances are great as well. Lee Singer belt out of the fucking park. I would say he's he's definitely improved as a vocalist. Uh, just really good shit all around. I love the production. Again, I love how much bigger it feels, which is definitely something that benefits a band that is uh, growing with the time. They're not going overboard with it. They're just right with it. And structurally wise as well, really great. Not any uh, wasted moments. They throw in a lot of really good twists to the sound that do work naturally and organically. Just a really fucking good album from a band that has been getting a lot of good buzz for good reason. So definitely go and check this one out. It's really, really good. From that we do go to a debut, we have Hot Milk with their first album at Call to the Void, and this does get the lowest grade of the episode, but that lowest grade is only a B, so that means this album is pretty good, and it is pretty good. Um, this is a this is a pop punky thing, sort of a bit of emo in there as well, sort of a bit alter, alter, alternative rock, yeah, I can't speak sometimes. There is good presentation, however I think it does kind of lack direction at times, it's not really sure if it wants to go all in or that, and I think the album's better moments are uh, do come from when the band is just genuinely trying to be a bit crazier and a bit more out there, you know. Um, the lead singers, because there is two of them, there is a male uh, dude and a female woman person, bless you. Um, <laughs> they both have really good chemistry, the entire band is pretty solid too. I think they both play guitar, do the singers as well. Lyrically, there is themes of addiction and existentialism and... Uh, yeah, it's it's sort of got that vibe to it. The production is actually very eclectic and bouncy and really, really fun too. I think the riff work is really good. I like a lot of the guitar work. I think the drumming is probably the standout for me. Um, I've already highlighted performances. I do like the band as a whole. They do know how to present themselves. they got the right attitude about it. Uh, and the, I think the structuring is the only thing I haven't gone over. Uh, really good. Um, does kind of lose its way and feels a bit unsure of itself, but when it does lock in, it locks in really well. So, all in all, still a definite recommend and a really good example of a debut where, like, there is room for improvement and hopefully the band does improve uh, with their next one because I don't see this being their last album. I think this is a band that's gotten a fair amount of buzz and I've heard a couple of song singles for, uh, from them, uh, not even from this album, like, back in, t uh, far back in 2021, so I was really excited for this one. It was really good, so yeah, definitely go listen to it. Next we have Morgan Wade and her new album Psychopath. Now, I typically don't really cover a lot of uh, country music artists as a rule. Uh, there's another one coming up for this episode, uh, by the way, for the last album, spoiler alert. But I liked Morgan Wade's last album, Reckless. I like Psychopath not as much. I'm giving it a B plus. I think it's still got a lot of the fun things that our last album had, which is like good lyrics about addiction and anxiety and romance and love and sex. Um, her performance is really great too. I like a lot of the instrumentation. It feels a bit more stripped down compared to the last one, but it still really uh, tells a good story. I think where it kind of falls apart a bit might be the production for me. I think there is a couple of times, like, it doesn't seem like Morgan exactly knows where she wants to go with things, and uh, I think it was this, I think this one has the same producer as her last album did as well, so I don't know exactly what went wrong. It feels a bit safer compared to the last one, and I really wanted her to, like, push her boundaries more like she did on Reckless. <coughs> Bless you again. Is isn't he cute? Isn't he cute? Um, structurally wise, it's not terrible. It's got some really good pacing, and I like the melody vibey feel it gives. So, you know, it's a really good example of country, and it does tell really good songs and really good stories in those songs. I did, yeah, I feel like there might be a couple of uh, production issues, not production issues, production issues, but Morgan's uh, writing and performance really saves a lot of this album. So I definitely still recommend giving it a spin if you just want like a good solo uh, female country artist Morgan is pretty damn great at it, especially for someone so young as well, she's only 28, so 
Again, she's still someone who's got her best years ahead of her, and hopefully her last album does learn from this one's minor mistakes. Next we go to, um, it's, it's not a big deal, it's just, you know, Spanish Love Songs uh, with their new album, No Joy. And Spanish Love Songs' last album, Brave Face of Everyone, was my favourite album of 2020. This might not be my favourite album of 2023, that still might be um, Blossomed by Pupil Slicer. I'm still giving this an A+, and quite possibly putting it in the top 5 of this year, because holy shit... Okay, so this is different for Spanish Love Songs because their last album, from what I understand, their previous albums before, I really do need to listen to Joint Songs of Blues and Schmaltz at some point. Uh, all pop punky leaning emo stuff. This one has new wave and post punk revival elements, and somehow they fucking work. And they work really well with the wrist. There's some really good solo work. I love the drumming. I think the bass work is great. I love the heavy focus on synth and keyboard work. Meredith Van Water is the keyboardist of the band. Also married to Dylan, which I didn't know until uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, Dylan Slocum is the lead singer of the band. Um, yeah, she does a great job on that front as well. I think the production is absolutely fucking exquisite. Doesn't overbear on anything. Pays enough attention between the post-punk and emo elements. Perfect blending together. Uh, Performance-wise... I can't really think of anything I hate at all. I fucking love all of it. Dylan Slocum is an amazing singer. I would argue he's gotten better in the three and a half uh, years since Brave Faces. Everyone came out. Still sounds great. Everyone is absolutely fantastic on this album, though. Um, Lyrically-wise, it does, again, cover very depressing topics, mostly uh, those of, like, uh, loss of friends, of identity, uh, trying to uh, cope with the current climate and... Uh, basically a lot of stuff they tackled on Pray Face of Everyone, but with more of a personal lean and more of a, like, introspective thing, which is, again, something that last one had. I know, they've always been great storytellers. Uh, some of the fucking things, like, on this album, like, some lines, I could genuinely see myself getting tattoos. You know, like, you're not a ghost to stop disappearing from Haunted is, fuck yes, you know. Ah, god. So many great lines. Production's great as well, structurally-wise. It's their longest album. It's a f it's just over 45 minutes long, and it doesn't waste any of the time either. It's got so many great elements to it that really help to flesh it out. And, uh, yeah, it's just fucking great. Go listen to Spanish Love Songs. Listen to Brave Face, everyone. Listen to No Joy. Uh, just fucking go and listen to it. It's absolutely incredible. It's definitely... Mm, it's top five worthy at the very least. Possibly top ten. We'll see how the rest of the year shakes out. We've still got a few months left to go. And finally, we have Turnpike Troubadours with their new album, A Cat in the Rain. So this is a band I kind of heard about because uh, I have a friend named uh, Kasky. We haven't shared out in a while. Shout out to Kasky, my good boy. Um, he, uh, my good buddy, not my good boy. He is a big Turnpike Troubadours fan. I know he was looking forward to this album. From what I understand, it's their first in six years and the first since they had a, a breakup a few years ago. I think there might be a, have been some growing pains with this one. I'm giving it a B+. Plus. Because I do think it's genuinely a really good bit of Red Dirt style country, and it's got some really nice elements to it. Again, tells really good stories and lyrics about, um, well, drinking and partying. But it's not done in a douchey way. There is some good stuff about love and, like, music and being on the road. <coughs> there is really good performances as well. I uh, quite like the lead singer. He does a good job. Uh, there's a fair few band members as well, but they all coagulate really well and coalesce and form a really tight unit. Um, Production-wise, it's not terrible. Uh, it's got some really good elements to it, and I do wish that, again, much like with Hot Milk's album, I wish this one did go into the sort of more eclectic elements that country can have, but from what it does have, it does utilise it quite well. Um... The riff work, yeah, the, I was trying to think of something else. Riff work's quite nice. I do like the uh, banjo, banjo good. Uh, guitar's really, really good on this one. I like the drumming quite a bit. I think the bass might be my favourite work, uh, my favourite bit of work on this album. By the way, solid bass on No Joy for Spanish Love Songs as well. And structurally wise, also really nicely done. Only 10 songs, about 40 ish minutes, 40 and a half minutes. Not really a whole lot of time wasted. Really good stories told. Um, maybe a little bit repetitive in terms of its theming, but it does execute quite well. And uh, I do think, like, I don't think this was the comeback the band were looking for, but it's still a really good album. And I'm going to try and look forward to the next one, depending on how I feel about this in the future. But I did quite enjoy it. Oh no, my cat disappeared. I just had to put him out and also sort some uh, food stuff out with me mum. So uh, yeah, we'll do the ranking system now before I forget. A little bit ahead of breath for some reason. Uh, we have Hot Milk with A Call to the Void, uh, Turnpike Troubadours with Cat in the Rain, Morgan Wade with Psychopath, Holding Absence with The No Plot of Self Destruction, and Spanish Love Songs with No Joy. I could easily interchange those top two. But as always, go and listen to all of these at least once. Formulate your own opinions, because that's what makes this shit and this life very interesting to me. 
really good music, you know, really good weekend music. Um, sorry, a little bit out of breath. Uh, so, as to what's next for me, if I can fucking swing it, tomorrow night might be a start of the Battle Block Theater to Let's Play, but don't, I'm, I'm not making any guarantees because holy hell, Fen, I'm keeping my promise, I'm not doing it without him. I'm just not. Also, thank you to everyone who watched the Golden Path Tournament. Um, not just live, but also it's all up on YouTube as of last night, so go and watch it if you haven't yet. Really good stuff. And uh, yeah, that's it for the music of August. I've got a few things to arrange for September, but I can promise it's going to be some good shit. So I will see you all uh, tomorrow, likely, for a reaction, because there's a game tra uh, gameplay trailer for Aki from Street Fighter 6, so I might check that out. We'll see. As always, thank you for watching. You're awesome. Bye-bye.